Let's read John 11. John 11 is a story of our Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe we read John 11 ki story somewhere na Jesus motho mo re bale. Maybe we can read verse 15 somewhere there. Motho mo re bale verse 15 ana mola. John 11 John 11 We read verse maybe 15 Revale mola verse 15 Maybe we can start from 14 we read 15 but to my, my message is on 15 He says So then Jesus told them plainly Lazarus is dead and for your sake, I'm glad that I was not there. Amen. So that you may believe, but let us go to him. Can you see that verse there? Amen. Here it says, I'm reading it again, 15. And for your sake, I'm glad that I was not there. So that you may believe, but let us go to him. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I was reading this scripture. I was asking myself why this scripture is like this. Uh, when Jesus said, I'm glad I was not there. And then also, what was the lesson? I found that Jesus was beginning to teach his disciples to trust in him. Just write trusting in Jesus. Because here you can see this is a very bad thing that has happened. They said Lazarus is sick. And this is the message that they gave it and Jesus. And Jesus delayed. But now, look what Jesus now is saying here. He said plainly, Lazarus is dead. And look at this statement. I'm glad I was not there. In other words, Jesus was saying, if I was there, you people will think I failed. Or you people will think we have faked it. I connived with Lazarus to act dead. So I'm glad he's dead. I was not there. So trust in Jesus. He was saying that trust in me. Hallelujah. Amen. And then you know after that. Thomas said in verse 16. Thomas He said let us go and die with him. Remember this Thomas was not just saying this. Thomas was a man who always doubt Jesus. Even now here he said, no, this time we know what happened there. Jesus ran away from there with us. They wanted to kill him there. But as now he say, it means he's ready to die. So let's go back and, and die with him. But here Jesus was saying, Lazarus is dead. I'm glad I was not there. For your sake. For your sake, so that you trust me on what I will do on Lazarus. I found that what we are lacking is trusting in him. When I read the scriptures, I found that all of them, Jesus, whatever he was doing, he was teaching people 
to trust him. Here, Thomas was supposed to be saying, I trust you, and I'm going with you. Because the, the message is, Lazarus is dead. It means you can resurrect Lazarus. I'm going with you. But here they look at themselves, and doubt to say, what more do we are we, are we expecting? We are about to die. Let's go. Die you know, the word trust I once told you about is to depend unto him. To depend totally to him. Trust shows reliance. You rely Dependence on him. Dependence on him. Or, or to have confidence in him. You cannot have confidence in Christ unless you have got confidence in his word. Like now you say, uh, you know, I'm going, I was not there Trust me, I was oh, not there. Kiaya, See what I will do. I'm going back there. Kiabuyela. Lazarus is dead. Lazarus For your sake, you know I'm with you, but I'm going there. He was saying, trust my words. When I reach there, there is something I will do. So now, look, Thomas was still confessing faith now. He was looking at himself and saying, we will die. Whereas Jesus was going to bring resurrection. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If we read Hebrews 6, verse 4 to 6, Hebrews 6, 4 to 6, we found this. Let's read. Hebrews 4 to 6. 6, 4 to 6. Hebrews 4, 6 to 6. Just read in English, Mama. It says what? 4 to 6. Yes. Erin. Yes. For it is impossible to restore to repentance uh -huh. those who have once been enlightened spiritually and who have tested the consciously experience the heavenly gift and have shared on the Holy Spirit and have tasted and consciously experienced the good work of God and the powers of the age world to come. And then have fallen away. It is impossible to bring them back again to repentance since they again nailed the Son of God on the cross for as far as they are concerned. They are treating the death of Christ as if they were not saved by it and are holding him up again to public disgrace. I wanted to tell you that that scripture, the writer of Hebrews, was showing trust. But once you lack trust, there is betrayal and rebellion. Listen to this. Here is as if we are taught that we have to experience what we have been given. We experience the grace of God. Once we lose that grace, we, it's impossible for us to come to it again. Most of people who betray and rebel to encourage them again to experience the things of Christ. It's impossible. Because they know everything. In other words, rebellion shows the lack of trust. Betrayal shows the lack of trust or it comes by of lacking trust. Most of the time, you find that 
People are no longer relying on to go. There are many things that we can show that we are rebelling against God. Betraying things of God. Betraying God. This comes by lacking trust. Once you lack trust, you are an instrument of disgracing God. I don't know if you are hearing that. Once you lack trust, you become a symbol of showing that God is useless. That's what the Bible says. It's impossible to restore them. Because they have been saved, but now they have played with it. I don't know if you are hearing that. I found that there are many things that trust can do in <laughs> our lives. Number one, trust brings profit. If you want to be profitable, trust in him. If you read Jeremiah 7 verse 8, it shows that trust brings profitable. And Psalm 31 verse 1. Trust brings deliverance from shame. Listen to this. You cannot trust God. You remain shame. You remain poor. You remain sick. Sometimes when you face what you are facing. God is teaching you to trust. When you are in the trust, you are in the process of God. When you are in a trust, when you are trusting God, you have allowed God to put you in His own trust. Why the message of trust? This shows that there will be some times that you will face difficulties where you won't see the light of where you are going. Look what Jesus when he said to the disciples. He said, let's go on the other side. And the Bible says they enter the boat as they were. You know the Bible says they enter the boat Bible as they were like that. Meaning that Jesus was like that. There was nothing he took that we can say he has used on the road. But when he was moving, the tempest rose and they start to fight the waves and the water started to enter the boat and Jesus was sleeping because he trusts his ways. When Jesus speaks something, let's go on the other side. He says challenges will come but we will reach on the other side. Can I tell you this? Once we trust his ways, that does not mean that we won't face challenges. Sickness will come. Problems will come. But what he says will happen. I don't know if you are hearing me. So what we need to do we need to know that trust when we have it is our instrument to take us where God wants us to be. We can hold it and he will take us there. Challenges will come, Challenge but it will take us there. Look what the disciples said. When the water starts to fill the boat, the, the Bible, Bible says they cry out. Can I tell you this? This is the nature of a man. When the problems start to rise up, there's nothing we can do except crying. What we need here is, is to trust him the more. What God wanted to teach us there was to say, if Jesus is asleep, there is no problem. If he's quiet about your situation, there is no problem. Can we all The answer is coming. I don't know if you are hearing me. Can you just ask somebody? Are you sure you trust someone? Are you sure you trust someone? Listen, if you trust people, they will disappoint you. 
But if you trust Jesus, challenges will come. When they come, Jesus is still there. He is quiet, but he is there. Can I tell you this? I see your problem. He is quiet, but he has not forsaken you. He said, I will be with you until today. Just depend on him. Hold on until he open a door for you. I don't mind what you are facing, but I see victory at the end of your challenge. If you trust him, something is about to happen. I don't know if you are hearing it. There is something that is about to happen. The devil wants you to say something wrong because of the challenge you are facing. Tell yourself that what I'm seeing is here. If he is quiet, it means he's in control. When the Christians were saying, I don't mind when I have prayed about my situation and I could not hear anything about it. It means there is a solution about my challenge. I don't know if you are here we need Christians who trust in his word. If you are not seeing him, open the Bible. He said, I'm with you all the time until today. That's why we need to reach some things God will allow them to test us if we are showing that we rely on him. Sometimes things will come just to shake us. You know, Jesus, when he rose up that day, he said, hey, be still. Look what these people say. What man of men is like this? They, they begin to see him in another way. Here, Jesus has been teaching people Trust in me. Trust in me. Even that thing was to teach them. When the, the, the tempest dries down, you know, they say, what man of men is like this? They were supposed to have seen them before. If they knew what man of men was, they could not even complain about any challenge they were facing. I don't know if you are hearing me. How many of you know Jesus here? Lift up your eyes if you know Jesus. I'm here to tell you, if you know Jesus, you won't worry about what you're facing. After the challenge, you are still going to praise him as you are praising before you face the challenge. I don't know if you are hearing me. Shake somebody and say, hey, I can see the hand of the Lord is upon your life. Trust him. Trust him. The hand of the Lord is upon you. Trust him. In Psalm 56 verse 4, I want us to read that verse louder and clear. Because it shows that trust takes away fear. In Psalm 56 verse 4, I trust the Lord. I don't care about my debts. I don't worry about what they are saying. I've got no fear about my sickness. Because I know he can heal. Can you read verse 4? It says what? In God whose word is praise, whose uh -huh. word I praise, in God I have put my trust. I shall not fear. What can mere men do to me? I just read that verse again, Mama. In God whose word I praise, uh -huh. in God I have put my trust. I shall not fear. What can mere men do to me? Once you trust God, a man is a mere man. You know, what, do you understand the, the word mere? You know, that word was supposed to be saying, Nothing man or no man. Mere man might be talking about there's no man. So therefore, even what somebody is doing on you is somebody that is already to be defeated. It's not existing. It's not there. 
You know, this makes me to tell people last time. I said, you people are working. You must trust God in your position. You must reach a level whereby when you search for a job and there is someone on top, even when he's there, you don't see him. You say you want that position. The reason why you want the position is because there is no body there. It's only you there. So you, can, you are the one who can rise up to the position. So there's nothing that man can do to you if you trust God. Whatever he's doing to you is zero. Listen to this. Whatever man does to you is to affect your focus. So that you look on what he's doing. We need Christians who take us from the take their eyes from what people are doing. Because these people are not even there. I don't know if you're hearing me. That's what we're afraid. Maybe you're not even there. Can I tell can I tell you something? You might be speaking, but you're not existing. You might be fighting, but you are defeated. So when you trust God, a man is a mere man. Whatever he's doing is useless. I mean, it's something that will happen today and tomorrow is finished. I don't know if you're hearing me. Many times we are holding. I mean, people, we are failing even to forgive them. Because whatever they are doing is a lesson of trust in you. You need to prove a point that I can see hatred, but I trust the Lord. I can see sickness, witches and wizards, but I trust the Lord. I can see a divorce, but I trust the Lord. I can see rejection, but I trust the Lord. Trust takes you to see beyond of what you are facing. Tell you that trust takes you up to see beyond of what you are facing. Some of you are looking at what you are facing. You are wasting time. And you are hearing people talking. Look beyond. You will see that you are better than them. That's why they are criticizing you, lying about you. Look beyond. You will see what you are praying for. Can I tell you this? Many things you have been worrying about are the things which are useless, done by men, which will fade soon. When you trust the Lord, I say, when you trust the Lord, He will take you beyond what you are going through. I don't care what you are facing. But I'm seeing you beyond. Beyond, beyond. Shake somebody and say, hey, I see myself beyond my challenges. Some of us here, because of the challenges we're going through, has affected our trust. You know, there was this thing that was happening to me from the beginning. When, when I trust God, when I pray for you, when I pray for you, I don't care what will happen. Because I know what will happen. If I pray for you, you say you can't walk. You may not be walking now, but tomorrow you'll be walking. I trust God. You know, when, when you trust God, your expectation is always right. I don't know if you are hearing that. Because trust takes fear away. And fear open your spiritual eyes. I mean, fact, fear is there to affect your spiritual eyes. So that you won't see what God is bringing. Uh, I don't know if you are hearing that. So now, fear is there to close your eyes. But when you trust God, trust will take you like a boat to jump from this mountain to another mountain. I see you going to the mountain of breakthrough. There's a mountain of breakthrough that is coming to you in the name of Jesus. Ask your neighbor, say, do you trust God? About what you are facing, do you trust God? When you trust God, you don't need anybody to speak for you. 
You don't need a backup from me. A man is a mere man. You know, since my experience of being here, I've seen that somebody will do this. I mean, after some months, we forget that. And we still move forward. Because a man is a mere man. Whatever they did to you, if you still hold it to your mind, it means you are defeated. I don't know if you are hearing me. But if you trust God, you know that what you have went through was a solution to the best thing that happened. If you trust God, what you went through is a solution of what is coming. It's the best thing that happened. Everything works for good to those who trust God, to those who love Jesus. I prophesy good things in your life. I say victory is coming to you. Solution is coming to you. There's something that you won't do. Once you trust God, even your lifestyle changes. Because you are expecting you have got hope and So you won't live to disappoint him. You, 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 because you are expecting from him. Do you know why people sin? It's because God, God has failed them. As they are saying that. God has failed them. But if you trust this one. Called Jehovah. You will know that you will never fail. You are the one who is failing him. If you see that this thing. Can I tell you this? Your, the, the character you establish. To attract the presence of God. To where you are. Is to understand who he is and believe in him. Knowing that what he has said will come to pass. I don't know if you are hearing me. I'm hearing some people here. I'm just hearing the heartbeats of the people who say we trust God. We trust God that he will change our situation. We will never leave because of finances. We can go through the furnace like Shadrach, Meshach, Meshach and Abednego and go on the other side. I don't know if you are hearing me. Check somebody and say, hey, I'm in the furnace, but I'm not burning. I'll come out being the same. And in the furnace, I'm in the same. But I'll come out being the same. I'll come out being the same. But I'll come out being the same. But I'll come out. Can you tell somebody that there's a five days of trying to cook and you and check if you trust God. Don't be afraid of the what you are facing. Trust God. Don't be afraid of what you are facing. 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 Don't be Maracal 11. Verse 20. Verse 20. Can you just read it aloud in your Bible? If I link Bible yale now holo. In the morning, as they were passing by, uh -huh. the disciples saw the fig tree had withered away from the roots up. Just read. 22. And remembering, Peter said to him, Rabbi, uh -huh. meaning master, uh -huh. look, the fig tree which you cast has withered. Jesus replied, have faith in God constantly. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart in God's unlimited power, but believe that what he says is going to take place, it will be done for him in accordance with God's will. I want to tell you this, listen. The opposite of faith Papa no is fear. It's not doubt. So it's not doubt. So the opposite of doubt eh, Papa no is trust. Good step. When Jesus passes there I with them, fita. when Mula. they look, when, and when Peter look at the tree, he said, ah. Ah. in other words, what Jesus spoke there. 
They never thought that God will do it. They, they just saw that Jesus was just speaking because of disappointment. But Jesus he shows that he trusts God. Whatever he says will happen. Can you just read that verse again? I want okay, you to read it to understand why Peter was shocked. Read again, Mama. Na amakeji. Yes. Read again. Read verse twenty. In the morning, as they were passing by, the disciples saw that the fig tree has withered away uh -huh. from the roots up. And remembering Peter, said to him, Rabbi, Master, look, the fig tree which you cast has withered. With that. Jesus replied, have faith in God constantly. Stop there. Jesus replied, have faith in God. Amen. Constantly. Jesus was saying, here, yeah, learn that you need to know God must be trusted. Here Jesus was still teaching trust. He he said, said, you know, on the words I've spoken, I spoke them trusting God. That's why you are seeing results. That's why you are results. You know, the reason why we say we speak faith, we speak faith, we speak faith, we speak faith, we speak faith trusting God, it will happen. If you just speak, speak with doubt, nothing will happen. But if you speak trusting, you will see results. Have faith in God. You will see results. But if you speak trusting, you will see results. Have faith constantly. Jesus was saying, you must trust God that whatever we say, he does it. If now I trust God today, and I, and I doubt tomorrow, I trust God tomorrow, and I doubt, we will speak things that will never happen. If you want to speak something, trust God. Trust God. People will come to you. Are you sure you'll get a job? Yes. Are you sure you'll get a job? Yes. Are you sure you'll get a job? Yes. Don't say, hey, but... Yes. I'm looking, the time is gone now. Yeah, I mean, look here, the Bible says, when they pass by tomorrow, this thing didn't happen same time. Peter was supposed to have seen it because Jesus face the fig tree and say no one will eat from you. The fig tree was so nice and they went away. They were still asking why Jesus said that. It's only in the morning that they will see that the fig tree has withered. When they pass there, ah, this is the fig tree. Ah, ah, Jesus said, no, you Jesus must said, trust oh, God. We will trust, trust God. God. When we speak God. things, they happen like this. I don't know if you are hearing me. Today, are you, are you trusting God? Are you trusting God? Listen, there are times where we don't trust God. We use our means to reach somewhere. But I'm here to tell you, if you start to trust God today, you are going to be a child of miracles. You are going to be a child of miracles. You are going to be an example in your nation, in your family, in your village, in your city. Do you trust God? When you trust God, I will say, "Mama, things will happen to hurt you." The entire thought of which I would talk, you feel the pain. But you say, "But I trust God." I'm feeling pain, but I trust God. 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 Don't ever think you won't feel pain. Disappointment, you will feel pain. Sickness, you will feel pain. I don't know if you are hearing me. Sickness, you will feel pain. Rejection, you will feel pain. Delay, you will feel pain. But you will say, I felt it, but I trust God. 
The moment when you say but, you have cancelled not pay. You have cancelled what caused the pain. I don't know if you are hearing me. You must cancel what caused the pain. Let me prophesy you. I'm giving you a prophecy now. What you are waiting for many years, you are about to receive it this week. I say you are about to receive it this week. The man you have been waiting for. Take it right now. You will see it this week. When we trust God. We speak things that will happen. I don't know if you are hearing that. We speak things. That will happen. I think many of us here. We have read the story of. Shadrach, Meshach and But we have read it in a wrong way. If you can hear the statement they said, they didn't say we can't go there. They say, Nebuchadnezzar, you are a king. We want to enter there. As your wish. If God does not save us, let it be known to you that we won't worship that thing. We worship the living God. I don't know if you are hearing that. They say we want to enter. It is your wish. You certain one to sift you. Like a wheat. Satan is doing whatever. God will allow you to go through there. But what is important? Don't bow to Satan. Trust the living God. He will take you forward. Say I will Trust the Lord. I will trust the Lord. What are you facing? Whatever you are facing, you can stop it by trusting. I don't know if you are hearing me. I want to tell you this thing. Once you say you are a Christian, you have declared war. I want to tell you this. You need to know this. Yeah, well, that thing of, you see, come to Jesus, you get jobs. Come, come to Jesus, Jesus everything yeah, is fine. Come, come to Jesus. Jesus. It's not true. This place is not our home. I don't know if you're hearing me. Jesus said, cheer up. I have overcome the world. Why? Because you will face tribulation. There are things you need to face. But cheer up. Why? Because I have overcome. In other words, trust me. Look on me. I mean, don't look at the situation. Look what happened to me. If I have overcome the way, you will overcome. I don't know if you're hearing me. So Christianity is not money will come, business will come, job will come, you won't be sick. Sickness will come. Trust the Lord. When you trust, the doors will be open. As the doors will be open, I see doors are opening. Right now, doors are opening. If you believe, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Ask your neighbor. Just ask your neighbor this question. You are here, you are hearing this message. Are you sure? You trust the Lord. Can you just ask the name? Say, answer me now. Is your character shows that you trust the Lord? Is your lifestyle show that you trust the Lord? If truly you trust the Lord, show us by your lifestyle. And the Lord will lift you. Let's read one scripture we close. I have read this scripture several times. Proverbs 28. Proverbs 28. Verse 25. Verse 25. I have read this scripture for you one time. But please don't be offended. Just, it's a scripture. He said what? 
an arrogant and greedy man stirs up strife. Uh -huh. But he who trusts in the Lord will be blessed and prosper. Read it again. An arrogant and greedy man stirs uh -huh. up strife. Uh -huh. But he who trusts in the Lord will be blessed and prosper. Read it again. An arrogant and greedy man stirs up strife. But who trusts in the Lord will be blessed and prosper. Can you read that in King James Version? You got it here? Just, just read it aloud. Stand up and read. Arevale. He that of a proud heart stirreth up strife. But he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. Amen. That's why I say, don't, uh, don't fight me now. That's why I can't let you go. Let me get to move on after me. Is it King James Version? Which yes. Version? Is that what? Read it again, King James Version. There. He that is of proud heart stirs up strife, uh -huh. but he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. <sighs> Asa, are you fat? Yeah, unolile na. <laughs> Can you just read it again, Mama? He that is of a proud heart stirreth, stirreth up strife. Yeah. But he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. The person won't, because even myself, that scripture is hitting me a lot. You know, I've been trying to eat thinking I'll be fat. I found that the, 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 the fat. Fatness on me is the stomach. The stomach will be growing. That's what the Bible says. The person will be made fat. It means you won't make yourself fat. What makes you thin is a strife. Can you just read it again, Mama? He that is of a proud heart stirreth up strife. Uh -huh. But he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. You know, as I'm reading this scripture and people are watching me all over the world. To be fat is not wrong. We don't need a miracle to be thin. We don't need that miracle. The Bible says we will be made what? Fat. We need a miracle to be fat. You know, I want to pray for people to be fat. I, I, I want you to be fat. You know, people must be aware of your presence. Even when you are coming, they must feel you. Ah, even when you sleep in your blanket, people can see there's someone sleeping here. I mean, can you just sleep? You find someone when he enters there, he doesn't know whether there's a person or what. I, I pray that God will make you fat. And you stay fat. If you will stay fat, it means you will prosper financially. No more strife. No more worry. No more complaining. To be fat is not to be oversized. To be fat is not to be oversized. It's not to be having be obesity. It's to be fat. It's to find us that we cannot see a, a bone on you. People must never see a bone on this you. This year, those who think you will die, they must never see your bone. I don't know if you are hearing me. I, say, I, I see you coming. Everybody will hear you. Say, I'm coming. You're about to hear my presence. When you are coming, when you are coming, they must know your prayer. You must say, ging, 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 ging. Your enemy must be silenced before you reach them. 
In other words, God want people to fear you. And he doesn't want people to compete you. Be yourself this year. Trusting the Lord, reaching your destiny. This year is your year. You will gain fat. What's worry? Hey, I get to worry. Kuri, kisa na scripture say kwa kusuzo kisi rerelo juu matumo. I was supposed to have spoken about this word from the beginning. Sauno na, sauno. The one of becoming fat. Kauri, ukano na juu. Because how can you be fat? Usajibuti. When you are not eating well. And usajibuti uwanzauri. Not eating well it shows that you have nothing. It shows that you are worrying. Is it not true? You must change your size this year of your clothes. I, wardrobe is also changing. Your wardrobe must change. Are you ready to change wardrobe? Oh, ready to change your wardrobe by trusting the Lord.